quantum computing stocks have been all the rage lately, the speculation reflects a belief that the quantum processing chip represents a fundamentally new compute paradigm, similar to how the parallel processing of NVIDIA's GPUs unlocked this AI revolution that Intel's sequential processing CPUs could not facilitate. This is why we turn our attention to Rigetti Computing, as a company that designs its own superconducting quantum chips and embodies the potential for a new leader in fundamental compute hardware. Rigetti was founded 12 years ago and is a leader with 252 patents issued or pending and have thus far deployed 18 quantum subsystems. So they have successfully commercialized. This head start is important as quantum computing truly is different from the current architecture with GPUs and CPUs. Now, without getting too deep in the science, the key thing to understand is both GPUs and CPUs rely on classical physics principles. So each data point is stored as a binary one or zero data unit. Quantum processing units, though, are based on quantum mechanics superpositional principles and thus store data as a qubit, which is a zero, a one, or both simultaneously. How this data is stored as a key differentiator and allows problems to be solved not just in parallel, but also on an exponential scale. This allows for complex, complex problems that would take millions of years for NVIDIA's GPUs to process to now be solved in seconds with a quantum processing unit. One example that highlights how game-changing quantum computing would be is on medicine. In the development of a new cancer drug, a pharmaceutical me molecule needs to select a small molecule that it can bind strongly with. An error in predicting it, even by a small amount, makes a difference between a successful life-saving drug and a multi-billion dollar failed clinical trial. Using NVIDIA's GPUs would require either a sacrifice in the size of the model in, or the accuracy of the physics assumptions would need to be lessened. As the number of possible configurations is just too large, it's 10 to the 60th power for a number of combinations that they would have to test, which is a trillion times a trillion times a trillion times a trillion times a trillion. Huge data set. GPUs can't handle it. Quantum computing chips, though, can handle it. And that's why quantum computing is a really big deal, as it will advance scientific discovery with its ability to solve problems on an exponential scale. Now, we like Rigetti Computing for a play on the quantum computing growth due to three factors. First, is they don't just design the quantum chip, but they are rather fully vertically integrated. They design the chip, they have their own R&D production factory to produce these chips, they've designed multi-chip interconnects, they've created hardware that allows integration with non-quantum chips, and they have a software stack similar to NVIDIA's CUDA that serves as an interface to utilize these chip processors in a cloud environment. Rigetti has set themselves up as a TSM, NVIDIA, Marvell, Broadcom of the quantum computing industry in their best case scenario. Second factor that stands out about Rigetti is their quantum chip has scalability in mind. They devised a proprietary architecture that allows a multi-layer of Quibit stacking across three years of iterations since 2022. This benefit allows for rapid Quibit performances improvements by stacking more Quibits on a chip, similar principle for Moore's Law's improvement for logic chips the past 30 years. Last factor that is a positive is even though Rigetti's revenue is minimal on the factor of tens of millions, they have commercialized and are working with a cross-segment customer leader group, like the defense industries, DARPA, NASA, you have energy, uh, energy representation with Lawrence Livermore National Labs, and you have finance leaders with Moody's and HSBC. Getting customer feedback on real quantum applications is an important step in Regretti's brand as a legitimate quantum computing company. So these are three pros of Regretti. Now let's go through the three negatives. First is their cash burn projections. Rigetti recently raised more cash to take advantage of its stock surge, so now has $575 million in cash. At best, this covers a 2030 with today's current cash burn rate. However, should they ever scale revenue 
this cash burn rate will also accelerate to run out much faster than 2030. Nevertheless, I don't see how they are profitable before 2035, so at best case, they need a fundraise for five more years from 2030 to 2035. This is a very long time, and the quantum market right now is just too immature. So Regetti, like most companies in the pre-mass production phase, just need to wait and the technology is refined enough that it's ready for mass commercial usage. Second turnoff is their CEO, Sabati Kalkarni, in May 2025, sold out of all of his shares in Regetti. So why would I be interested in trusting this company if their own CEO does not believe enough in them to even hold some shares? Last point is competition. Google, IBM, Microsoft, for example, are all in the R&D phase with quantum computing and have much larger budgets than Regetti. The $575 million in cash Regetti has to last multi-years of their R&Ds is a drop in the bucket for these tech giants, which eventually I believe will be the top dogs in quantum computing. So these are the pros and cons. Now let's look at a possible 2035 market cap for Regetti Computing. Before we do, please read the disclaimer in the notes below. We are not financial advisors and anything we say should not be taken as financial advice. Also, if you like content like this, please help us out and click like and subscribe as we aim to cover the most innovative companies twice per week. Now let's look at Regetti's valuation. In 10 years from now, in 2035, the bear case for Regetti is they are no longer a standalone company. They are dependent on future, larger fundraising rounds to stay afloat and if they do not continue to innovate to stay amongst the quantum computing leaders, the stock should revert back to the price it was just last year in 2024 at sub $1 a share in a $200 million valuation. Regetti, at that point, will likely be acquired, which would be a 98% decline from here. The absolute bull case for 2035 is that McKinsey's report that quantum computing's total addressable market increases from a $4 billion segment into a $72 billion segment is true in 2035. And that Regetti can capture 15% of the market share with our full product suite offering. This would mean a $10.8 billion revenue run rate. Now let's give them NVIDIA's price to sale ratio premium of 26, and this gives Regetti a $280 billion market cap in 2025 essentially a 17-bagger from here. The risk-reward scenario for this stock is definitely extreme on either side. For my verdict, though, I tend to side with the bear scenario more. I do not like that Regetti has no chance in profitability for at least 10 years, so we'll need to keep its edge to fundraise. The problem is that the tech giants can easily outspend Regetti by 1,000x if needed, so Regetti will end up behind once it becomes a top priority for these tech giants to invest in quantum computing. For me, a potential better play for quantum computing is either invest in these tech giants or in a picks and shovels play through the company Form Factor. Form Factor is already profitable as they sell test probes for the semiconductor equipment sector and their role in quantum computing is in selling probes for the cryogenic machines that are essential for quantum computing to function. What do you think, Dad, when you look at Regetti? Thank you, Scott, for that excellent presentation, graphics and content. So for my, um, my part, I'll do Regetti, symbol RGTI. Okay, for the company, for number one, company fundamentals, the dividend, it has no dividend. The beta is 1.6, which means it's 60% more volatile than the S&P 500. The market cap's around $15 billion, and earnings comes out November 11th. So for that, I'm neutral. Okay, for earnings, the last four quarters, it only beat one of the last four quarters, which means that three of the last four quarters, it missed. And that's not good because they're the ones who tell the analysts what they're going to earn. So that's not good. So that's a uh, negative. Okay, for the um, number three, the profit margin is negative 2,000%. It has no debt and has no peg ratio. For that, I'm being a little generous. I'm only doing it because the debt has no debt, but it's 
neutral to negative for number four, for the moving average, the price is above the 50 and 200. The 200 slope is positive. And then for the Bollinger Bands, it's between the upper band and middle band. If I see it going to maybe 40, the 27, the slow stochastic oscillator is decreasing at its 73. So it's not overbought or oversold, so that's neutral. MACD and unbalanced volume is, is uh, neutral. Okay, for the analyst, number five, there's one trunk cell, one cell, one hold, and three buys. In the buys, the price is nine, between 19 and 26. So that kind of tells you where the price is. Uh, and the price is in the 40s, and the ones for buys are saying it's between 19 and 26. So that's not that good, and the institutions only hold 35%. I forget it. So I'm a strong uh, no, and um, the reasons being that that it just can't compete with Google. And I can see some of those big companies even poaching some of the talent, the uh, talent from Rigetti, and the CE sold all of his shares. That's my, my reasons for being neutral to negative. So back to you, Scott. Thanks, Dad. Overall, we are both a no on Rigetti Computing. Quantum computing in the decades ahead should be able to bring breakthrough innovations in scientific discovery, but right now it is just too early for us to invest in this segment. With that said, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe to follow us as we aim to cover the most innovative companies twice per week. Until next time, happy investing.